Okay, thank you all very much. So this public meeting is being recorded. It's being streamed live on the internet. The recording will be archived and available on Council's website. All care will be taken to maintain attendees' privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, you should be aware that your presence may be recorded. So the City of Parramatta acknowledges the Barramatical clan of the Darug as the traditional owners of Parramatta and pays its respect to elders past and present. These are the opening remarks of all council meetings. The next item for this evening is confirmation of the minutes. As this is a special council meeting, there are no relevant minutes to be adopted. Similarly, there are no apologies to be tendered in relation to declaration of interests, I once again confirm I don't own any property in the City of Parramatta Council area and do not believe I face a conflict of interest for any of the matters on today's agenda. The next item are minutes of the administrator and there are no minutes of the administrator recognising that this is a special council meeting. The next item for the meeting is the mid-year mid review report for the period July to December 2016 on the operational plan of the Council and the quarterly budget review statement. I invite Mr Greg Dyer to provide a presentation on that item. Thanks, Administrator. Uh, the purpose of this report is to present the mid-year review of our operational plan and the December quarterly budget review statement. I'm very, well, very pleased to welcome you all to this special council meeting, both uh, here in person or, um, as well as some of you online, which is presenting the results from City of Parramatta's December quarterly review. As you're aware, the six months to 31 December 2016 was the first full half-year period completed by our new council entity, following the proclamation of the City of Parramatta Council on 12 May 2016. In the nine months since, we've focused strongly on getting to know our expanded community and we've invested substantially in a seamless and uninterrupted level of services to be provided right across our new LGA, local government area. I'm pleased to report that our efforts in this regard have been very broadly successful with our community receiving a continuation of previous high levels of services, and in some cases we like to think improved or enhanced services in fact. The mid-year report against the operational plan provides an assessment by, the by each responsible director of progress for each of the 12 major priorities that we've set ourselves. The assessment indicates that 11 of the 12 major priorities are tracking in line with our plans and have no substantial risk to delivery. The digital city priority has been delayed whilst a review of the direction and strategy of that area is undertaken. And now supported by the establishment of a new future city unit and advisory committee to prepare a prioritised implementation plan to help steer this work uh, back into the future. The operational plan review also sets out all of the principal activities, actions, services and projects that will be undertaken to facilitate the achievement of Council's objectives. The report provides a status on how each of the actions, services and projects are progressing at the mid-year point. As a result of ongoing investment in infrastructure and community assets right across our neighbourhoods, particular achievements for our LGA, which I'd like to call out in particular, uh, include the following. Confirmation of a substantial leasing commitment in December at number three Parramatta Square by the National Australia Bank, uh, who will be, be bringing more than half of their Sydney workforce to our city. Uh, this coincides with an equally significant commitment by our state government to commercial premises at 4 Parramatta Square, which together with the opening of uh, the Western Sydney University campus at 1 Parramatta Square provides certainty that this exciting precinct right next door to us here 
will now be fully delivered as a world-class commercial, residential and civic hub around a brilliant public space. A strong commitment, therefore, to Parramatta Square will continue throughout 2017 with the final planning for our futuristic civic and library building being realised and concluded. Parramatta Pool will remain open until 31 March 2017 before finally closing to deliver New South Wales, New South Wales Government's Western Sydney Stadium development. Council is working to identify a suitable site for a new modern aquatic centre and two possible sites are proposed for community consultation. We continue to explore options, recognising the importance of the task and the need to reduce inconvenience to patrons by way of providing temporal, uh, temporary uh, solutions to, uh, the, uh, to, to, to the issue of the, uh, stadium, of, of the aquatic centre's demolition, which will occur from 31 March, as I said. Also during the period, the significant $15 million Stronger Community Fund um, has um, been determined uh, and allocations have been made in relation to uh, $1 million in grants of up to $50,000 each to a number of community organisations uh, who do such wonderful work in our community. And together with um, the allocation uh, yet to be announced of the $14 million larger scale priority infrastructure and services projects, which aim to deliver long-term economic and social benefits to our communities. Uh, these will be announced uh, in coming days. The State Government's recent announcement and commitment to the $1 billion Parramatta, Parramatta Light Rail project connect, connecting Westmead to Carlingford uh, via the other... I'm sorry, I've lost my page. Uh, connecting Westmead to Carlingford uh, via the CBD, uh, North Parramatta, uh, Camellia and the Western Sydney University at Rydalmere. So a very significant project uh, which was um, uh, announced in terms of the, um, commi the, the committed route uh, subject to uh, public um, consultation and so forth over the, the, the coming month. Other major council initiatives have delivered excellent results and partnerships including a waste diversion rate for the City of Parramatta of 74%, which exceeds the State Government target. As we continue to work with our partners to reduce the, the waste to landfill, this target is the result of new arrangements to send waste to an alternative waste treatment facility in Eastern Creek. Um, innovative pro programs such as Know Your Waste, the Mobile Community Recycling Service, the Bowers Collection and Rehoming Service and Free E-Waste and Asbestos Collection Days are all significant initiatives run by Council which have had good traction during the course of the last six months. The Parramatta Skills Exchange has been established. It's a partnership with TAFE New South Wales, expected to be fully launched this quarter and commencing operation from here within uh, the Town Hall. The program provides industry-based opportunities for young, unemployed uh, and underemployed workers to work on developments in the city and receive on-the-job training. In this way, we are hoping to provide a significant social dividend to the substantial uh, works program which is being conducted across our city. Uh, the Parramatta Skills Exchange is part of a three-year memorandum of understanding uh, to strengthen local jobs uh, and to grow and foster a closer partnership between City of Parramatta and TAFE New South Wales. I say it often, here in Parramatta we do wonderful events and the past six months uh, saw a quite jam-packed and um, exciting program of successful events and festivals, celebrating our rich cultural her heritage and many other things besides. Overall, attendances have grown and award, award recognition for many of our events has been received. Highlights include the Parramatta Lanes Festival, uh, which was held in October and uh, which I thought was a substantial improvement over the 2015 uh, event, which, is in, which was in fact 
awarded the best community event in the National Australian Special Events Awards. Parramatta Day on the 29th of October, the Loy Croton Thai Water Festival on the 12th of November, our Parramatta Christmas um, functions and events uh, held through uh, from the 24th of November. Uh, just sneaking into the six month window was the Parramatta New Year's Eve uh, event, of course, which was bigger and better than ever on the 31st of December, obviously. Um, outside of the, um, the, the, the six month reported on here, but noteworthy nevertheless, was a significant event, of course, on Australia Day, which ran all the way through uh, the day from balloons in the morning to uh, uh, concert events in the evening. And then, of course, significantly, the inaugural Parramatta Tropfest event, which was held just recently on possibly the hottest day uh, ever recorded in Parramatta, never mind, uh, which was the 11th of February 2017. Uh, with the Parramatta Lanes and New Year's Eve festivals attracting approximately 160,000 visitors combined, we expect the upcoming annual Paramasala event, uh, which is early in March, uh, to continue our city's successful and entertaining events program. Discussions with state government on the use of the Riverbank site uh, for the relocation of the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences continued to, during the December quarter and in fact are continuing um, as we speak. Um, and we've included the exchange of relevant information to assist with the development of their plans and, of course, with site valuation. Uh, we expect those discussions to continue uh, in the first half of 2017 and to hopefully be successfully concluded in, within that time frame. Some other um, projects and schemes which we have conducted during the half year and some of which are ongoing um, more within our residential local government area locations include works for the $11.2 million upgrade to West Epping Park, uh, which of course was a project we'd inherited from uh, the Hornsby Council. Uh, but that park will incorporate uh, incredible sports and leisure facilities for the community. The works are now well underway and are scheduled for completion by July 20. 17. We're also in the middle of the construction of the new $1.8 million preschool in Carlingford and that is a project which we inherited from Hillshire Council. That project we've taken on and uh, it's nearing completion with um, expected operational um, status uh, to be successfully achieved by May 2017. The new Wentworth Point Library and Community Centre is not expected to be delivered until the first quarter of 2018. Uh, residents, of course, will be kept informed of progress. That was a project that we inherited from Auburn Council in the um, creation of the uh, City of Parramatta. We'll keep uh, residents informed on progress um, and uh, we will have the opportunity to provide input to the final design uh, in early uh, 2017. Project partners are currently identifying outstanding compliance and design issues um, and meanwhile Wentworth Point and Newington are celebrating their community culture by hosting the Festival of All Abilities successfully delivered in late 2016 by Cumberland Council with in-kind assistance having been provided by the City of Parramatta. I'm pleased and proud to say that the Epping Aquatic Centre was reopened in October 2016 after a significant um, renovation to filtration and plant equipment and upgrades and repairs to grounds and facilities. And I will say that the Epping Aquatic Centre hasn't looked as good for several years. And so I'm very pleased that we've um, made such a substantial difference in such a short period of time since acquiring it from Hornsby Council. More than 25,000 customers have visited the uh, centre since it was reopened in September. So in summary, I think it's been a very strong first six, month, six months uh, of the year. I congratulate the significant efforts of my staff in this regard. 
I'm also very grateful for the positive support of our communities. Our plans for the balance of the financial year are ambitious and given the size of the task set for the city. However, the organisation remains committed to the plan and we will, of course, continue to keep our community informed of progress. Looking more specifically at our strong financial performance in the recent December quarter, I'll ask Craig Beecroft, Council's Chief Financial Officer, to provide an update on that aspect of the report. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> so Council's financial results remain on track to achieve a four-year operating surplus of $1.8 million. This is an improvement of $400,000 on the September forecast. On a year-to-date basis, our net operating result before capital revenue was $8.3 million higher than the budget estimate. Whilst I would love to attribute this figure solely to an increased output by the city, this improvement is largely due to the timing of revenue being transferred from other councils for merger areas. This timing effect will reverse over the balance of year. Expenses have increased overall by 100000 for the first half, mainly due to increased employee costs to support the additional works across our expanded council area. These costs have been partly offset by some savings in materials and contracts expenditure. As indicated earlier, the full year's outlook to June 17 is a strong position. The net operating result before capital revenue is forecast to improve, as I said, by 400,000 to an annual surplus of $1.8 million. Revenue forecasts are set to increase by $3 million or 1.3%, with the additional revenue coming from user charges and fees income. This higher forecast for user charges and fees comes from, comes from the, expect, sorry, the expectation that the current levels of building development activity will continue, with regulatory and statutory fees remaining the key drivers. The full year forecast for operating expenditure has increased also by 2.6 million or 1.1%. This is as a result of increased staff costs due to the need to create additional staff positions in a number of departments to enable us to service Council's expanded LGA and to service the increased demand stemming from the buoyant property market. The additional expenditure is offset by the revenue increases, which I've mentioned earlier, in a number of service areas, along with the higher development application fees. On a year-to-date basis, the overall capital revenue is below budget, due largely to the timing of receipts from our state government grants. However, the receipts from Section 94 developer contributions remain on budget, with strong develop development activity continuing to drive this revenue extreme. I do ex expect uh, this to exceed the four-year budget. However, this is very much dependent on the timing of lodgements. Capital expenditure is below budget on a year-to-date basis. As a result of the timing of all projects, sorry, as a result of this, the timing of all projects has been reviewed during the December quarter, and we are continuing that review into the March quarter. The four-year outlet for capital budget is, ex is actually forecast to $99.5 million, which is actually down $3.7 million from the expenditure forecast in the September quarterly review. We do recognise that the balance of year capital plan is ambitious, and whilst we are working hard to deliver this spend, it is possible that there may be some slippage in terms of cash flow over the balance of year. We will be monitoring our performance closely and will continue to keep the community informed if and when changes are required to the capital plan. Uh, more information of the capital plan is detailed into part B of the quarterly review document. Please feel free to look at that. And further information of the financial performance of Council on a year-to-date basis and the four-year outlet is, outlook sorry, is included in part B. So in conclusion, I can confirm that the December quarterly review indicates that the financial position of the city will be satisfactory at year-end, having regard to the projected estimates of income and expenditure. So I therefore ask the Administrator to note the media review of the operational plan the December quarterly review statement and the responsible accounting officer's report. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Greg, and Craig for your um, verbal comments on the report. I'm conscious that the performance that's reported in the media review is a team effort. So are there any other further comments from the team or um, are Greg and Craig's comments adequate? Tired but optimistic. Thank you very much. Um, 
In relation to the report, firstly, I'd like to congratulate all of the council staff who contributed to this report. It's a much stronger report than the one that I saw for the first quarter, and I, I'm very pleased with the contribution that's been made by all members of staff for that. Uh, second thing I'd like to say is, of course, the report reflects very significant achievements that have occurred over that period. In listening to Greg's report, um, certainly I, um, uh, it's a, an enormous quantum of achievements over the period, but also some very important things that have touched the community or have transformed the place. Uh, the item that Greg finished on for the Epping Pool, um, I've certainly had people who've been in contact with me who've described the changes that were made to the pool as the best advertisement they've ever seen for council amalgamations. Um, in terms of the range of projects that were previously with Hills and Hornsby, thank you very much for that report. For the people of Wentworth Point, if you're listening or if you're present, um, the Sue Coleman and I met today with the chair of Pulse and newsletters have been distributed to everybody in the area and there will be community consultation through March and we're confident that together with the community's feedback a very um, high quality building can be delivered there to meet the council's needs. So starting from the centre of the CBD uh, very significant achievements have been made at Parramatta Square. It gives uh, me great confidence that in the council and in the council's activities to know that the pre-commit for those buildings is there and hence those buildings will come out of the ground uh, as, together as a group which offers a very significant impacts for the community in terms of uh, one set of construction impacts but also a, a new precinct transformed and a whole precinct delivered as one. Uh, in terms of council's advocacy to state government, I note the continued advocacy in relation to the pool and I also note the council's success in its advocacy in relation to light rail, which began some four or five years ago with an uh, initiative from the council. Um, in terms of investments as to the transformative impact that light rail would have. Moving out from the centre, there have been very significant events delivered across the whole of the local government area and in uh, Parramatta centres that have brought in thousands of people from the LGA but also from other areas across Western Sydney and other areas of Sydney to have the opportunity to see how Parramatta is transforming. Moving further out, I think that the community has been impressed by the council's willingness to engage and um, by council's willingness to have conversation. And certainly on that note, I would very much congratulate Rebecca Grasso's team, but also Sue Coleman's team, their ever-growing brag wall of compliments achieved by the sanitation, outdoor staff, the community staff in relation to the amalgamation is impressive. Good work has been achieved in the governance framework too, not only in the introduction of IHAP, but also in the policies that are under review and have already been delivered. Um, this is an impressive outcome on top of everything else that's occurring across the council. Um, in relation to the planning area, but also in the finance and customer services areas, very significant efficiencies are being achieved. Throughout the report, it is clear that council has, in some areas, up to 20 or 40% increases in outputs, be it DA processing, customer service requests, streets to be cleaned, bills to be processed, across all of those areas. And I note that that is being achieved at a highly efficient rate um, and that while staff employee costs have increased, in no way is that increase commensurate with the increase in transactions and services being delivered. This is a very impressive example of efficiencies across the council. Okay, 
Okay. Um, as a team and as a leadership group, uh, it is clear that you are incredibly committed to the council and to the delivery of services, and I congratulate you on your achievements as a group. More specifically, I congratulate your staff who I meet every day through my activities in the council, uh, be they at events, uh, in relation to customer services, in relation to property matters, in relation to development and policy initiatives that are before me, library staff, community engagement and consultation staff, but also with the general manager. Um, uh, that your investment in these outcomes and your staff's investment in these outcomes is clear. It's probably the point now to stop and to um, uh, ask whether or not there are any particular matters that you would like feedback on or whether or not um, there are any further questions that you'd like to address at this point. Okay, be this as a business plan, uh, it's, I think, that an appropriate question from an administrator in relation to the six months of the remainder of this operational, of this period of the operational plan. It would be a, a time to reflect on whether or not you see any key risks over the remaining six months of the operational plan. Uh, to the delivery of the remaining actions and how you would see that risk as being addressed. Um, so, Administrator, I'd, I'd address that question in the following way. I think Council has a significant number of projects on foot um, which are treated as critical within our project management framework. The framework ensures that appropriate focus is applied to keep them on track with monitoring of a range of risks, including financial, schedule and scope, resourcing, and the overall risk profile. Some examples of significant projects which require strong focus, and I've mentioned some of them tonight, within the PMO framework uh, during the period are Council's new civic building on Parramatta Square, which I, felt with a, which I didn't mention, the ongoing transition, transition and transformation project related to the formation of the new council. We're treating that as an important project to be maintained uh, from a PMO perspective. The ongoing management of the Wentworth Point Library project, which I did uh, mention, of course, completion of the North Rocks preschool facility, allowing its occupation within the agreed timelines, Completion of the North Rock, uh, completion of the West Epping Park upgrade, uh, which I mentioned, is a significant project that needs to be kept on uh, on track, um, and that's a project, as I mentioned, which we inherited from Hornsby Shire Council. So all of those projects are subject to PMO uh, oversight as the primary methodology by which risks are managed and mitigated. We're also acutely aware of the need to keep our community informed. Uh, in relation to all of our projects, not just the ones I've mentioned, of course, and particularly of any circumstances which may have arisen which could alter the timing of any other... Uh, the, the timing of the delivery or any other aspect of the, um, of the significant projects uh, that we have underway. Other matters which will require strong attention during the, during the period are the completion of work to provide suitable interim arrangements for the community, given the imminent closure and demolition of the swimming pool and the continuation of our discussions with state government properties relating to the move of the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences to our Riverbank site. All of these things are top of mind, but um, we are a very busy council uh, and I think our project management office framework is important in keeping a control over all of our projects and making sure that we're on track and uh, in particular making sure that uh, we keep projects within the financial and other parameters that we've set for them up front. Um, I, in my summary, I realised I forgot two things that I really wanted to recognise at this point in time, and that was the support that has been provided by the place management team and the planning team and the enforcement teams in relation to the work that's being done in Epping. 
and also in Wentworth Point in terms of very important upgraded efforts in relation to regulatory enforcement and pro uh, parking enforcement and the work that was done to ensure that that could occur at Wentworth Point which required a private sector agreement. But also the work that is was announced just before Christmas in relation to the Epping Planning Review. It's an ambitious process and an ambitious project but it's timely and we hope well received by the community. So uh, my apologies for forgetting that very important piece of work. By my recollection over this period your work has also been uh, recognised in a number of awards, one of which was announced only a couple of nights ago. So can I congratulate Sue Weatherly and her team on the award that they received for good planning? Can I congratulate, uh, particularly in relation to Tilopia? And Rebecca, can I also congratulate you on the work that was recognised in terms of major events and the activation of Centenary Square. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I think that concludes this evening's items. Um, I resolve to adopt the resolutions <coughs> as circulated, which is that I note the mid-year review of the operational plan 2016-17 and that I note the December 2016 quarterly budget review statement and the responsible accounting officer's report on the financial position of council. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. <laughs>